Welcome to the Misophonia Podcast. This is Season 4, Episode 17. My name is Adil Ahmad, and I have Misophonia. This week I talked to Jennifer, my second or third Jennifer. She actually reached out to me in January. She had just found out about the podcast after going through what she describes as a Misophonia episode that really got her to seek help in many places, and she's now fortunately in a much better place. We talked about something that's been coming up a lot lately, for obvious reasons, the effect of the pandemic on us a year into it. We also go back deep into her past and her experiences as a child in a pretty chaotic family and how she hid in her room a lot. We also talk about her many career paths and the various therapies she has used recently to help her get through since the episode at the start of the year. You can check out her art too at froghappy.com and I'll have a link in the show notes. Don't forget to follow this show on social media at Miss Funny Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And please leave a rating and review if you can, wherever you listen to this podcast. All right, now here's my conversation with Jennifer. Welcome, Jennifer, to the podcast. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's so nice to be able to talk to you. Yeah. So uh, so you said you've heard a, a lot of episodes and, you know, I like to just kind of get an idea of where people are, are located for, for, the, for the listeners. Um, so I am in uh, central New York, upstate New York, just outside of Syracuse. It is um, sunny today, which is unusual for us. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> Cel- celebrate the sunshine. Oh, that- that's right. Where are you again? Uh, Minnesota in St. Paul. That's right. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Usually it's um, five feet of snow this time of year, but we've we've got a little bit of a, a sunshiny warm break today. So it's pretty yep. nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. And and uh, and can I ask, can I kind of what kind of what kind of work you do? So um, I have for the last five years been doing my own artwork. I, last year I illustrated a book. Um, I do some drawing. Actually, tomorrow I'm getting ready to do a, a kids workshop uh, through oh, wow. our local library here. I'm doing a, a a painting, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I paint. I for a long time I did uh, painting in cu- kids' rooms. I did murals in kids' rooms, which was really fun. I have also spent some time coaching tennis. I spent about five years coaching tennis within the last ten years, and then prior to that, I worked in Washington D.C. in commercial real estate and had an office job. <laughs> okay, <laughs> where so I three- also traveled a lot. Yeah, three, um, I would say, fairly different uh, lines of work there. Uh, art, yes. tennis coaching, yes. and uh, corporate real estate, uh, commercial real estate. Okay, okay. You got uh, it. I, I, interesting you got that, um, it, so the, the, the art kind of makes sense to me, the office job uh, and now <laughs> art. Um, do you want to maybe such a, shed some light on, uh, is, was that an in, intentional kind of, uh, kind of move? to? In yeah, your I think <laughs> <laughs> Things have kind of unfolded. Um, I went to school. I went to college, and someone suggested that I do accounting, and I was like, okay. And I did accounting. It was sort of this thing that made sense for me at that time, and I wanted to be able to get a job when I got out of college. So I graduated with a business and accounting major. I did not go the CPA route, but I got into commercial real estate in a more of a management position, and I worked for the most fabulous person for 10 years and over those 10 years my job became less accounting oriented and more marketing customer service oriented and i did a lot of traveling in there which um brings up some misophonia stuff yeah but um at the end of that time period i was kind of getting to know myself a little bit better i was in my just, just turning 30 i guess or early 30s and um wanted to shake things up. I was on my own. I had a um, single and I decided to go to art school. So I quit my job, sold my car, moved closer into the city and went to art school. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Which was a blast. And things have kind of unfolded from there. I've used both my business background and then sort of my my creativity to a, a little bit here and there in my last i guess 20 years or so yeah so the so the shift to art what was more 
um, just was it was it misappointed related? Like you were in a in an office and it was just you just couldn't stand it, or um, sounds like there was some that issues is, there. That is such a good question. I'd say it partly evolved because of my position and that I got in more of a creative position in that job. Um, I would say that I've really up until the last maybe 10 years of my life, I'm I'm not sure I really even knew exactly how misophonia affected me. Mm. So um, I've come to understand about myself that I, I, at first I thought, oh, I'm just the kind of person that doesn't like working for somebody else, or I don't like being in an office. And again, I was very lucky. I had a great position and I had a great um, job, but I kept moving towards working on my own. And I realize now that even when I had my office job, I was doing things to avoid certain situations because of my misophonia. And then the more and more I started working for myself and on my own, uh, it, it was very, um, like I kind of had the protective place for myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people, even without misophonia tend to, um, there are certain types that, uh, you know, steer towards uh, having that more more control and freedom um, yes. <laughs> and for us it's it, ha- it has that added benefit of uh you know not making us want to you know throw somebody against the wall kind of thing and so <laughs> because we got yeah um, i love that whether it's because of who i am and i'm a creative person as well as an analytical person i've got a business and an art, art background i'm not sure but definitely misophonia has been a thread through my entire life that's driven certain things whether i knew it or didn't know it um, right yeah <laughs> oh and when did you find yeah, out that it actually pretty intense happened? way yeah when did you find out that it actually was a thing um, i'm assuming you knew it was causing problems throughout your life um when did you like really when you, were you able to name it okay so i love that question because i've listened to many of your podcasts um and a couple in particular really made an impact on me but it was only through somebody else that I knew that misophonia had a name. And that would happened about three years ago that I knew mm. it had a name. And they told me because they had read the article that many people on your podcast talk about. And they was it in the New York Times? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, when, when was that article? I actually that was 2011. Sure. I think it was May okay. 2011. Yeah. So I was a little late to <laughs> knowing that misophonia actually had a name. Um, and it really, really was only until this uh, January when I had some incredible difficulties with it specifically. And um, I'm calling, uh, I had a misophonia sort of episode that I did started doing research. But with that said, it has affected me, my uh my entire life and i just didn't know what it was i didn't know what to call it i just said you know certain sounds bother me or i knew certain sounds bothered me and the but i never really knew that it was anything i spent quite a bit of time in therapy in my 20s talking about it and trying to figure it out but it never went away i just had a kind of a better understanding of it and maybe even a better understanding how deal with it but um again yeah it really wasn't until the last few years that i knew that i had it was such a relief so in your 20s you were were in therapy talking about what like sound sensitivities and and dealing with that but but no one was able to tell you that actual condition that other people have no and um my therapist at the time was yeah very willing to talk to me about it we were trying to figure out what it was related to or if it had any sort of underlying cause, but definitely mm. never put a name to it. And and uh, truthfully, it, it hasn't really been until this year that I've had this sense of, of not being alone. And I don't wish this on anybody. <laughs> um, 
as you know, yeah, it's not a fun thing to deal with, but it was really helpful, one, to find your podcast as well as find some things online and then to know about that article that I'm not alone. I'm not crazy. That um, feeling crazy or feeling different has been a thread through my entire life, my life relating to misophonia. Yeah, uh, a lot of us can, re- can relate for sure. Um, yeah. Do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about what ha- what happened er- earlier this year? Yeah. So, you know, maybe. Um, what can I actually? Let me tell you. Do you mind if I start kind of going back when it first started? Uh, whatever. And then yeah, cool. and then kind of <laughs> build up to what I called my episode, and then I'm still sort of coming out of it's still sort of unfolding. Right. My my earliest mem- memories of sound sensitivity are around middle school. And we lived in what I call an upside down house where my bedrooms, the bedrooms were downstairs and the living room and the Mm. kitchen were upstairs. So one, uh, well, first noise actually probably is the gum chewing. I know a lot of people have that (laughs) gum chewing or the the sound, right? I love that you giggle because it's just, it is what it is. It's, It's the gum chewing, the maybe like some cracking and or sounds while we're eating but then the other one for me and these the the gum chewing um somebody walking above me so this um somebody walking upstairs that noise as well as music on the other side of the wall so if i could hear somebody playing music on the other side of like my bedroom wall that was a trigger for me so those are the three triggers that started at that time in my life. And those three have been the most prevalent through my life, especially the gum chewing. Um, um, so I'm assuming, was it family members that were, that happened <laughs> to be chewing a lot of gum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, these are poor family members, right? right? And now that I'm married, oh my gosh, my husband, he's a he's a saint, but I, it, it, it is such, such an unfortunate thing that the noises are often the ones that come from them. Um, yeah, and I think so. My my sister um, played a lot of loud music. She was very outward and expressive, and I tend to be a more inward, um, introverted, introverted, sensitive person. So, or maybe overly sensitive. Um, I think back to that time period and I think about how much, and this makes me pretty emotional and kind of sad for this little kid. I spent a lot of time in my bedroom and I spent a lot of time kind of maybe even like making forts in my bedroom. And I had a, I can sit here visualizing my closet Mm. um, and very specifically think about kind of hiding in that room almost to the point where I've got my hands over my ears, you know, covering, you know, kind of protecting myself from the noises. Yeah, it was a lot. There was other things, there were other things going on. At that point, there was some sort of unmanageability within my family. My parents were divorced. My sister was um, a, a little bit older than me and kind of maybe frustrated with her life and playing music. And my mom was working full time and trying to support two two kids and so there was the, the house often <laughs> was, mm-hmm. was messy and I think I, I found like literally physically messy um, I found myself hiding in my room and uh, does that make sense because <laughs> I say yeah. all those things yeah no uh, that's yeah. right so there was uh, you know not uncommon <laughs> that there was there was some kind of uh, 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 I don't know if trauma is too much, too strong a word, but there was some chaos around the house. And, yes, uh, chaos. You found, yes, um, you you found escape in your room, and, and not just from noise. It sounds like probably yeah, like you said, <laughs> physical mess yeah. maybe. Um, yes, and uh, and yeah, and that was like kind of the one place where you probably had total control. Um, and interesting yes. that uh, the the walking up. Yeah, you were living in an upside down house, so. There was probably a lot of walking upstairs <laughs> when you were trying to hide in your room. And I can see how that could uh, interfere with your desire to control your environment in your room and, and kind of exacerbate some, some misophonia. I'm just kind of like, you know, 
commenta- commentating yeah. and speculating maybe, but uh, yeah, that's uh, absolutely I'm, I'm kind of seeing those pieces fit, fit there. A, a whole bunch of bubbles just kind of pop as you're saying that one is that um, I, I'm not sure if I've made this up, but I can kind of hear my mom saying something like, well, Jennifer likes to spend a lot of time on her own. She likes to spend time in a room. And, and I'm, thinking i wonder if that's true like did i really like that did i like being by myself or was that something i was just doing to kind of get by at that point to Um, cope yeah Yeah. and then the other yeah to kind of cope the other thing is my sister and i love my sister so much um and she knows that my sister's uh, passed away at this point she passed away about eight ten years ago so it's funny to talk about my sister but um she tortured me <laughs> oh she would okay. play the she would play the music louder i wouldn't say she tortured me but yeah she she's she had a pretty powerful force in my life playing the music louder or um you know forgive me i'm like to my sister right now but you know she would maybe chew the gum in my face even more you know, kind of like kids do. Yeah, um, yeah. But for me, it was really overwhelming. And, you know, if I saw kids kind of playing and picking on each other, there is a normalcy to that. But for me, it was really difficult. That was mm-hmm. very difficult and probably forced me to go even more inward. Oh, the, so um, you were extra sensitive to uh, uh, observing kids kind of picking on each other? Yeah, no, you know what? I guess what I mean is, yeah, if I saw kids picking on each other today, I'd be like, oh, that's kind of cute or funny okay. or normal. That's what kids do. But for me, yeah, maybe I am sensitive about it. Um, for me, it was, yeah, that wasn't a, a fun time period. No, right. no, <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> I love what Did you sh- said, though, something about having, sorry, like about having control. And, and again, mm-hmm. I'll go back back to what happened a few months ago but um it really wasn't until recently that i realized that it i have set myself up at certain situations in my life to be in more control and that now and i think i've always been oh i don't want to be a controlling person or you people use that you're a control freak and i've had a negative feeling about that for a long time about myself up until recently and i'm like you know what it's okay. It's okay for me to set myself up in places where I can be in control because it's maybe a healthier thing for me. And the reason I say that is I look back, I was in my room <laughs> organizing things like alphabetizing my, my toys and mm-hmm. putting all the little gadgets and things in certain drawers. And I was, I really think I was trying to control my environment within that that room at that point in my life that makes and sense i was I always look back my and be like and yeah you were <laughs> <laughs> i had like, big you? do slips like a library um <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay see we're not alone uh yeah no that's interesting i mean i i think the the, the whole control freak uh con- i think i think it's the negative connotation is only if like you know uh, you're you're bossing people around but controlling your own environment i mean i think that's a very natural and, and important skill <laughs> Um, yeah, and especially for us. Yeah, I, I probably have been c- considered being overly controlling person in my family. And maybe that's why. Yeah, it's it's and maybe because they just don't. I think I, I've always had this feeling that I was kind of different in my family and not really knowing why. And the misophonia is a huge part of that. And I don't think my family really even knew that. I don't think my mom knew that I was having trouble with my with sounds and maybe my sister did my sister knew but but I don't think she realized that it kind of wasn't my fault that I was mm-hmm. having trouble with it she was just teasing me about it so and really the first person that's truly understand stood that I have this that I deal with the misophonia and, and the need to control my environment is my husband and he and I have been together now for 
eight, eight years. And he's the first person in my life that I've been able to tell him everything. This is the deal. And I threw it right out there at the beginning of our relationship. And he's like, okay. he said, the first person that's made me feel like, hey, it's okay. Yeah. And other than, oh, and that's not true. And the other person is my, uh, the, the therapist that I talked to in my 20s. Right. But, right. Okay. Yeah. But at that, but your husband knows about misophonia and he's able to now like understand that it's a real yes. thing. This is the first person that that's that you've really been able to to, to label it with. Um, and, and with that, yes. with, with yes. that become comes at least you can kind of look at uh, um, ways to help you cope um, and uh, yes. and kind of make, make things hopefully make things a little bit better. Um, whether or not that's successful, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at least, at least you can try. Yes, <laughs> he's such a good person. He's a great, yeah. He's a great partner. He's a good person. We're good friends. We like each other. But holy cow, misophonia has been a prevalent part of our relationship, especially this last. I'm going to say like last six months when it kind of came to a head for me. Um, when, when we first met, I told him all about it. And so he was sensitive to the gum chewing um, and kind of knew about the music, kind of knew about the footsteps above me because I told him about those things. So he just didn't chew gum in, in front of me. But it wasn't until, and now I'd love to talk to you kind of more about the episode thing that happened. It wasn't really until the pandemic that things shifted and have changed yeah things have changed it's been it's definitely been difficult and getting better <laughs> it got really difficult and now it's getting better yeah Ooh. i mean yeah, that's that's come up in some uh right this come up in some new interviews that have not been released yet but uh just talking about how you know we're in a year into the pandemic and early on it seemed a little bit like okay we can maybe make the best of it we can be away yes. from most people who trigger us but then as the year kind of dragged on, it's now we're finding out it's almost becoming a little bit claustrophobic if you're not really able to kind of leave the house as you know as uh. freely as as before. So, uh, yeah, I think we're all feeling that. Um, yes, sounds like you yes. might have a, <laughs> sounds like you might have a, some personal personal experience yes. with that. I, I do, and I'll, I preface talking about the pandemic and. In COVID, um, my heart goes out to so many people and so much difficulty and people being sick and passing away and families dealing with that along with all the economic stuff. And I'm really lucky, both my husband and I and our families are really lucky. We have not, none of us have been sick. Um, we live in a really small community, a pretty small community. So most people here, um, we don't know anybody who's been sick or who's passed away. So super grateful and lucky. And again, and my heart goes out. And sometimes I think, you know, here I am dealing with this misophonia stuff and there's so many other things going on in the world, but um, that I, I do really want to say that. I mean, misophonia is just a part of my life and yeah, I don't want to apologize for it, but anyway, with, with that, um, <laughs> with yeah, all no, I mean that. that's totally fair. I mean that, yeah. We, I think we all, everyone listening, realizes that, yeah. and that it's interesting. I mean, we could talk about this later, but it, it, that kind of um, we, I mean, it's not like we're not sensitive. To, it's not like we don't realize that it's not doesn't seem maybe to others as important as as other things. But it, it all comes down to that kind of shame and guilt that we sometimes feel, yes. um, oh. which which is a whole other dimension. But I, you know, but yeah, please continue with with uh, it, it, with what you were saying. Yeah, it truly does. And I'm, I, like I said, um, and, and I'm already going to put you in the same category. We do tend to be very highly intelligent, sensitive, creative people. I mean, if we are alphabetizing our, <laughs> our toys and <laughs> things, there's, there's something pretty cool about us, right? Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, Chip is my husband. He started working from home in last March and, um, at the very beginning, you know, it was fun. He He's really lucky he was be able to work from home. He's able to, um, you know, his job allowed him to do that. 
And he actually started working harder, even more things with the economy were affecting his job. And so, you know, last March, April or so, it was kind of fun. He was excited. He could work from home. It was, he, he was excited to be home. He, um, you know, what's for dinner, what's for lunch. And it, and it wasn't like, I, I, again, like going back to what I just said, it's not all fun and games, but it was a different scenario that we sort mm. of enjoyed spending that time together at the beginning. And then, um, oh, and I was also super busy. So when the pandemic started, um, I mentioned earlier that my sister passed away. I had done some over the years, I've done some fundraising and I decided to take the opportunity to do a fundraiser and run um, a challenge, an individual challenge. A lot of people were doing that during the pandemic. So it was a, 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 a challenge that you could do and track yourself over a, a month. It was called the Climb Your Mountain Challenge. But no matter what, I was super busy with that and focused on it. and and um, spent about, I don't know, three, four months working on that. And then I was illustrating a book. So I was pretty busy with that and um, staying busy. So that took me kind of through to the, about November. So that was, we both were busy throughout the year and all at the same time, he's home, I'm home. I started feeling the weight of the world. I was you know, like many I worried about people, you know, our whole lives were changing, wearing the masks and all that. And I think that just kind of started weighing on me as a, as a person. Um, the right. thing I was doing for my sister was pretty intense because it was for my sister and it's for uh, raising money for brain cancer research. So I was pretty emotional through that process. Then I was reading a book, I mean, illustrating a book, and I was really into it, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to do that. And I'd never really done what I was doing. So I was, so things were kind of building up throughout the year. Then it's the holidays and, um, oh my gosh. And then probably just all the stuff in politics, uh, just a lot for me. Yep. And by, um, so what happened with all of that? in during i would say probably about three quarters of the way through the year maybe in the fall i started noises started getting added for me um and the first one which is still going on it's an added noise um so sensitive about talking about the the actual noises because i think they when you talk about a noise it triggers other people who are listening does that make sense yeah, yeah. I mean, a little you, you can, bit. You can, you can mention it, and obviously, and now okay. we've, and, and this is you know, obviously just consider this a trigger warning if if anyone's yeah triggered okay, by so the, the name trigger of it, warning. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I got about fifty trigger warnings now. So, but the the main one that's been added is a clanking on a bowl. So silverware to a bowl. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah, then it just even mentioning it right now, my heart starts to race a little bit. Really big one for me, and. And we have a house that's sort of an open, it's not an open floor plan, but it's an old house. So I could hear, you know, my husband using the, the, the bowl and the, it just, the, the kitchen and the noises in the kitchen, the kitchen became kind of this black hole of noise for me. And I, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I really do get worked up thinking about it. It just, it became so big um mm. and then wow yeah this is still pretty new for me all of these added noises like i said i'm i'm working through it so this happened in january so i'm still working through it but then um regular walking noises got added um more chewing noises got added so our eating meals together got started triggering me um doors opening and closing sorry i'm giving you all the trigger warnings now no, so no it's just okay. i mean i think mentioning is of... <laughs> fine yeah mentioning is probably fine Whew. maybe for me um yeah. lots of house noises he and i were both here a lot of energy in the house and just house noises galore then i think that very first week so they were kind of being added over the year the first week in january 
was the first time, and I just heard you talk with, it was either uh, Julie or Julia about this. It was the very first time where my noises started bothering me. And that just sent me into a tailspin. It was um, three days of me sitting on the, I make it a little emotional here, like, on the floor in my in my bedroom behind my bed with earphones on sound machine just trying to get through the day you know that was kind of i would go and i would do something and then i would go right back to the bedroom or um yeah and truly my heart is racing i just i didn't know how to escape the noises in the house the pandemic and then the noises that i was starting to create and um it was scary it was um it was a challenging, very specific three days, and then about a within a week of really being super overwhelmed and kind of hitting a, a bottom of not knowing that this, like, and being scared that this is going to be the rest of my life, that I wasn't going to be able to function normally ever again with noises. So yeah, yeah wow, okay, pretty yeah, that's, darn that's, intense. <laughs> that is that is intense. Yeah, <sighs> that, yeah, Julia. Yeah, Julia, you're talking about the the Julia podcast a couple of weeks yes. ago, I think, where um, yeah, she uh, triggers herself to the point where she has problems sleeping and needs to be on uh, yes. get extra With support medication. And... Yeah, yeah, yes. do breathing. Um, yes. And but this seems like for you, it was uh, just just Oof. in general, like a lot of a lot of sounds. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was crazy time. It's it's still a crazy time, but it's uh, you you mentioned earlier that a lot of things were kind of converging. Um, yes, in, in the world, um, you know, insurrections and whatnot, and it's just like, oh. I think all, all of us were. Yeah, I was I was checking was out. Week. I one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so crazy. No, I mean it's an interesting. I mean I don't want to. Uh, um, turn it into like a, a, a make it sound like a metaphor but uh it's it is kind of like tr just trying to want or wanting to kind of like uh you kind of you seem like you were kind of resorting to kind of a your childhood coping mechanism of trying to block yeah. out the rest of the world yes gosh um, it's so funny when i just said that when i was telling you out loud i was like oh my gosh there i am yeah. sitting you know in the corner of my bedroom but i happen to be upstairs in the bedroom here in this house with a hand my hands over my ears and my earphones in and my sound machine and just not knowing how to what to do just feeling so closed down yeah. but so, yeah, yeah and 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 there's I, I i also i think julia actually also said something about um yeah i've and many people in your podcast at some point i just gotta laugh about it because i can see myself now doing that and thank god i'm not there anymore Humor is a good coping um, mechanism. So whatever yeah. you can, yeah. However, yeah, I can so. help facilitate laughing at it. Yes, fully support that. Oof. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't yeah, want to. That, that was a. I don't want to dive too. Rough yeah, I, I, yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to belabor that because it obviously makes sense unless you want to. But I'm. I'm no, no, we're good. But, let's go. I'm going to tell you exactly how I've come out of it. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> Before anybody else goes into that, <laughs> into that, uh, into their own. Room. Yeah. And you know what, if, and, and I do like, I think in one of your, um, things about asking, you know, the tools that you've used, I have just, I, I have great tools that I never knew were out there. And I, I'm about kind of 70, 80% back to what just the typical noises were for me before. But so that's, that's a great thing. I still have a couple of noises that are bothering me. Um, but here I am. So it's three months later. I feel like I am on a better path in my life than I have been in in so long. I feel educated, free, um, sort of more hopeful than I have in a long time. Not only just about the misophonia, but about who I am. Because I I really had to dig deep into uh, how I'm going to get I, I I feel really lucky that that happened, believe it or not. How about that? So, um, cause That's it just set attitude. me on a, on a path to recovery. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm truly, I'm sitting here like I'm excited, you know, five minutes ago and my heart was racing telling you about all the triggers and 
if I'm in, now, three months later, here I am, I'm, I'm actually excited about where I am in my life and very hopeful. So the, the very first thing that happened um, was that, uh, and I'm not sure I was, well, actually, I asked my husband for help. I'm like, I need help. I don't know what to do here. I need help. And I, that was a big thing for me to say, I don't, I really don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to cope with this for the rest of my life. I don't know, you know, how I'm going to move on. And he, um, he picked up the phone and called a couple people and I'm, and asked if they knew of a therapist I could talk to. So the very first thing I did is I got on the phone with um, a therapist. I talked to that therapist, I think three times the first week and how nice that we can um, do all this like teleconferencing or, yeah. you know, video zoom stuff. I mean, there is something that has come out of the pandemic that you and I can sit here and talk. It's kind of neat. Um, but that, so I, I had three sessions with him in, in one week. Then I set up an appointment with my doctor. I got, um, I did, and she didn't know about, um, oh, I started journaling like right away. Every day I started journaling. And where'd you get that idea um, from? Just, that idea from? Was uh, it, uh... So, for, so probably I have done journaling in the past. So, I think um, whether it was um, Terry is the, the therapist that I started talking to. He, he focuses on cognitive behavior, cognitive behavior therapy. So right from the get go, the first things that we started talking about were how I could practically, how I could, what kind of practical things I could put into play in order to start moving away from <laughs> getting out of my bedroom. <laughs> and right. uh, one of them was just, yeah, journaling, sound machines, um, what other things? I guess that's the only thing that's coming to my mind yeah. right now. Um, I guess just more openly talking with my husband about the certain noises. But then when I I talked to, um, I set up an appointment with my doctor and it was really, I think the, the interesting thing that happened for me was that it, it was really hard when I called to get an appointment for my doctor um, the doctors are so busy right now and I couldn't get an appointment with her. I wasn't going to be able to get an appointment with her for a month or so. And I kept calling there every day. Like I was so willing and, um, to put the energy into getting better that I, I kind of advocated for myself. Does that make sense? That yeah. I was like, I've got to see a doctor, <laughs> please get me in. And I'm not like that. It's not, I, I kind of tend to, blow things off. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But I knew at that point I really needed to talk to somebody. So when I finally got in a, that, I guess that week I got in an appointment with her and, um, she had not heard of misophonia and she was so awesome. She said, I'm going to look into it and we're going to have another appointment in three days. And so I was able to see her again right away. Wow. Um, yeah. And it, I'm, yeah, just, I think, one, it was really nice that people, the, the therapist and she and my doctor were both available to me, but I really advocated. I made myself, I advocated for myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, yeah. To, to make sure that I was going to get some help. And she, she um, I also, I've heard you talk to other people about this. She did recommend a medication for me. Um, and whether people do medications or not. And so I did start a particular medication right away. And I'm hoping that, that this particular medication is just going to be a crutch. Um, and that's gotcha, something I can yeah. move away from. Yeah. And may maybe it's not. I'm not sure. Um, but I do think that that's helped. And it's one of many things that's helped. So the I've continued to talk to a therapist once a week for the last couple months. Um, I've probably had five appointments with my doctor, follow-up appointments, and then the journaling every day. Um, I've tried to do a, a meditation practice. And then and two other things that I've done is I've done some acupuncture as well as EF, EFT, 
um, the tapping practice. Have you heard of that? I think other people have. You, have you heard of EFT? I or tapping? Uh, pro probably have such a bad memory, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tapping, sounds, tapping, sounds, tapping, tapping sounds familiar. I mean, I, obviously I haven't heard it uh, that often, but can you maybe uh, talk about that? Yes. So, um, and I'm, I'm going to just preface by saying, I don't think it's the end all be all for like, mm -hmm. for me, I've had to do all of these things together, but, um, and I, I wish I could, it's kind of a, it's an energy based work. And there happens to be somebody here in the community that, um, does tapping. And I, I think I read about it. So like I, I said, w when this happened back in January, for me, I started doing all this research online. I found your podcast. I found the articles in the New York Times. I found all the stuff about misophonia and the the um, like definitions of it and how it's been evolved and people are understanding more about it. And then I found some Facebook groups and I think it was on one of the Facebook groups that somebody said, talked about tapping. And then mm -hmm. I remembered, oh my gosh, I think there's this woman in my community that does tapping. So I called her and what she did we had a zoom meeting and i've i've done tapping with her two times now is she um she's and i know she's done a lot of training it's kind of like um well actually i don't know i think she has like an accreditation but she asked me a bunch of questions um she asked me questions like what is the energy behind the noises for me and nobody had really ever asked me that i knew that the the energy behind the noises was negative like <laughs> it's not a, a happy energy right. um and she so she asked me tons of really interesting questions that i had never really thought of before relating to the noises um she actually asked me to describe what it was like and i said because she doesn't she doesn't have misophonia so um just being able to talk to her and help her understand was a, a great way for me to communicate about it for the first time really ever. And I explained it and I don't know if you can relate to this. It was like the, the noise for me is like a bullhorn in my ear. And for some reason it affects my right ear more than my left. I don't know why. Mm. I mean, it affects my overall everywhere, but mostly my right ear. It's like a bullhorn after the noise like so a bullhorn is blowing in my ear but it's almost like it just doesn't go away that that energy that the mm -hmm. bullhorn makes does that make sense so it it's not not all the noises are that loud it's just the energy behind it is so overwhelming to me so anyway um we went through the, each of the times that i've i've um, met with her on Zoom. She take she asked me all these questions, and then we go through through a tapping. Um, I don't know if it's considered a like a sequence, but you start tapping with your middle finger on your forehead, and you hit different points. And the first time through, you hit like your forehead, then your nose, then your chin, and then like your chest. And she said things like um you know i'm frustrated she did a she had me repeat a bunch of things that were sort of the negative connotations of the noises for me and then we went through the exact same thing and then repeated it but with positive like i'm hopeful that um i'm going to be understood it was it was just a really it's a really cool energy oriented hmm. process so i think it's called eft and then the the it's referred to as tapping the practice I highly recommend people looking into it if if it's available. Um, and I'm happy to send you any information I can kind of dig up that she, she, maybe she can send and you can put it on your. I can send you. Some yeah, send me some stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll put some links in the show notes. Practice. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, so it like I you feel are, like I you, am uh, just. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, it sounds like you're yeah, I mean, rambling like you, away. No, no, I love to. I love hearing <laughs> rambling. It's better than me. To, me better than hearing myself oh. ramble. So, um, yeah, so it sounds like wow, you really, yeah, you really advocate. This that's very admirable. I mean, you you obviously hit a hit a low point. Probably sounds like oh. to put it mildly. Yeah, and uh, you're really 
kind of went for a uh, just looked for anything and everything to kind of help out and you really hit a lot of check boxes and, and more and beyond i mean that's that's very yes. admirable and it sounds like it's it's making um making a difference i mean how, how would you say it's in, like in terms of your day-to-day are you um you're able to you're, you're not running back into your room uh anymore no. I, I take it or i'm not maybe just yeah, uh, 10 percent actually... of the time. <laughs> my um yeah i just feel free again i feel like I'm, i can come back to who i I was uh, feel free and not not even just again, but for the first time, like I said, I feel like I understand misophonia more than I ever have. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand that there's people out in the world that deal with it just like I do. And um, I feel hopeful that the things that I'm doing can help me. Yes, I can walk around my entire house. I've actually had dinner in, in the kitchen or in the dining room with my husband and didn't have earplugs in for the first time. I don't know. I think Ever? last week. Oh, okay. and it no. So it's not just since, a... um, since oh. the pandemic. So okay. pre-pandemic, we were eating together. Then pandemic and my what I call that episode in the beginning of January, and now I'm sort of kind of coming back to myself. Okay. Again. Yeah. Pre-pandemic, yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's a big step. That's a big step. It seems like I mean, you took a quite a journey there. Uh, since yes. last March, so it's great yes. to see. Great to see you're coming back. Yes. Um, well, yeah. um, so I, I know that I know we both have kind of a kind of a hard time limit, but um, uh, I would like to, yeah, I would like to let you um, ramble on anything else you, you want to share with the audience. <laughs> I mean, you're a relatively new listener to the podcast, but you've really been binging, um, so you know you have a good idea of what who's who's listening. Um, yeah, anything else you'd like you'd like to share with people about about your kind of uh, experiences? Yeah, well, first of all, yeah, thank you for letting me ramble because I have heard listened to you many of your podcasts, and you are a great interviewer, and you you let people sh- share, and then you have a wonderful way of reflecting back, and um, I I really have enjoyed, and I also appreciate that you do some of the is it brown noise in your podcast yeah right i did that on a whim yeah. when i started and i i just like let me just try it out and see what people think um and i hope that's helping it is very helpful so there are some things i can't listen to so yeah i have i really appreciate the work you're doing i really really mean that and i do feel like i kind of i'm i am in some sort of recovery right now from this mm-hmm. A difficult time so i do feel like i kind of rambled on maybe a little too much but no 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 i've been rambling in, a, in the most positive up. way oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> well thank you um if there's one thing i can say is this um that i there's been a thread in my life um very prominent that i'm the crazy one i'm the different one i'm the the weird one. I'm the one that's the, you know, I, we talked about this earlier about the control freak and whether I put all of those things on me, those labels on me, or I heard other people put those labels, I'm not sure, but I've always felt different. I felt like I had to be the one that had to retreat back to, I've always lived like I couldn't, Oh, this is a great um, example in when I was sharing houses or like uh, with other, with friends, I'm always the one, my friends knew I had to have my own room. Like I've always had to have my mm-hmm. own space. Actually, when my husband and I moved into our house together, he let me move everything in first because he, he knows that I needed to find my own space. Actually, that's a, that was a very positive thing. But um, through my life, I've truly had this, like I'm the crazy one thread. And it wasn't until this January where I really hit a bottom with the misophonia and then coming out of it, I realized I'm not crazy. It's just something that it just misophonia that I have and it's okay. And um, yeah, we're, we're not crazy. We're, and, and we're actually pretty darn fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny. Like I've had before, to learn we're this. highly intelligent. Yeah. Um, I mean, highly this, this intelligent. Me, the big lesson from this, this my big takeaway. <laughs> <Creative>. <laughs> reminder that we are. 
yeah, fun, yeah, know absolutely. how to laugh. I really have had to laugh at myself. Well, we've and, had to, um, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Um, and if there's one thing that, one other thing, that, that one's that one's the big one. We're not crazy. It's It just is what it is, and it's going to be okay. Um, keep keep taking care of yourself um, and and believe that it's going to be okay because it, it, it will be. Even in your lowest moments of the, the crazy noises, it, it, there, we can all kind of work through this together, and I really mean that. Um, there's one other little trick is that my husband kind of by – he would say, well, does that noise bother you? He would do something, does that bother you? Or I would make a noise and he'd say, does that bother you? And that is not helpful because, uh, right. <laughs> did you just giggle? Yeah. Because <laughs> the more he pointed noises out, the more they got added for me. And so I've had to lovingly suggest that he not do that anymore. Um, yeah, it's actually more helpful for me not to talk about the noises and just talk about, I just kind of live in a way that I'm in control and that I can put practical sort of things into play. Yeah, now that comes up a lot. We don't want to be reminded of it. Uh, we definitely don't want to. We definitely don't want an example of it. Yeah, um, no. But we we don't. We'd <laughs> rather just not think about it. It's um, so. um, Jennifer. Um, yeah, no, like. We, we, we got it. We're on one, but yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, this is, you're uh, awesome. Yeah, really interesting thank to hear your story. You. Glad you, glad you shared it, and uh, yeah, I think it affects a lot of people. And, and uh, I'm glad. You, most importantly, I'm glad you're coming out of it. And hope, uh, I hope that continues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the work you're doing. Thank you again, Jennifer. Like I said earlier, I hope you're still recovering well and inspiring to see someone stop and advocate for themselves. If you liked this episode, don't forget to leave a quick review or just hit the five stars where you listen to this podcast. Music, as always, is by Moby. And until next week, wishing you peace and quiet.